Hi everybody, this is Christine Bertram coming to you live from my hive here in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. We've had a busy week full of stamping <laughs> here in the hive and tonight's gonna be no different. <laughs> so I had um, my January monthly class live in person here on Monday night and last night and again on Saturday. So here we are. I love it when it pops right up and says that I'm live. <laughs> I've learned to wait for it. <laughs> Got that down to a science. So very, very cool. <clears throat> so we have seven people watching already. Wonderful. So it is January 21st <laughs> and I was live uh, quick, I think, on Monday night. Was it Monday? It, no, it must have been Tuesday night. I was live. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Karen. Hi, Luann. Hi, Kathy King. I was live on Tuesday night showing you guys the love cards. And, you know, you'd think I would know it was Martin Luther King Day on Monday. <laughs> and I saw some of the comments pop in after. Hi, Denise. Hi, Hillary. And I'm like, oh, yeah, President's Day is in February. I learned that, like, in fifth grade. <laughs> so, <clears throat> you know, when you're live, sometimes when you're put on the spot with trying to remember things, it just doesn't work so good. <laughs> so... So thank you to everybody for helping me keep what day it was on Monday straight. So we are going to have an exciting night of stamping. And before we get started, I was going to go through a little bit about <clears throat> some updates and where we're at with things. And so I have, I don't know if I flip the camera this way. I have, oh, let's see it. There it is. It's right uh, uh, um, there. <laughs> that, that board right there. You guys, I had that live last Thursday. That is the celebration board. <clears throat> so everybody who places $50 orders, so even if it's $100 or 150 for every $50, your name is going on that board. So hi, Amy. Hi, Jean. Hi, Deanne. Deanne, look, look, Vita, Nita. I got it. I got it. I have the necklace that Deanne gave me. I love it. So <clears throat> it's going to be my bee necklace here. <laughs> so um, for everybody who spends $50, you get your name on that board. So even if you're shopping with me online and you're not giving me the numbers like they do here in class, I'm picking a number for you. <laughs> so hi, Sue. So this is the, I don't know if this is the third or the fourth year I've done my celebration shopping spree board. Oh, I forgot to turn my volume off. Ha ha. Um, <laughs> I think it's just going to keep going. So everybody's name gets put on the board. And once I hit 25 names, then we do the drawing. And so I think on Monday night is when we did the live drawing for board number two. And Kathy King, <laughs> you were the amazing winner of that. And she put it towards the Forever and Always bundle, <clears throat> which I got ordered today. So yay. So we are halfway. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Danny. Woohoo! You played? Oh, you did? Awesome. So I, I saw that you had an email that came in <laughs> from Stampin' Up! from you. So yay. Hi, Faye. So I am, oh, I have to say that we're, we're, well over halfway through board number three. And once I see Danny, what she ordered, I'll probably be putting her name on the board. So so we will do that drawing either in a class or if it works out that it's on a live, we'll do it on the live. So um, so the celebrations in full swing, guys. Um, I know Danny did ask me about some of the celebration items, if they were available or not. And <clears throat> I, I think everything for celebration is available except for the ombre paper. <laughs> I wanted to say ombre, but I know that's a man in Spanish, so it's ombre. And that one is back in stock. I saw January 25th. Hi, Stacy. Um, so you're excited. Yeah, Stacy, I put your name on the board a couple times on the last one. Danny, your number is 16. I think 16 is taken. <laughs> so it's really hard to coordinate with people who aren't here in person to pick the number. I have to tell you all what's left and then you pick it. And, and I think 16 is taken on this one. So <clears throat> yes, top fan for Danny. So I don't remember what I was telling you guys about. Oh, celebration items. So basically the ombre is the only one that's out of stock and not orderable at the moment. But the problems that Danny was having was that you have to have items in your cart and, and it's gotta be over $50 before you can add celebration items. Um, thanks for sharing, Sandy. Um, you can't just put things in your um, celebration items in your cart unless you have $50 or $100 or if you already have celebration items in your cart, you can't add more. You'd have to take away. So that's how the celebration items work, but they should all be there. Hi, Mary Carls. Oh, Danny, 2, 22, 9, 15. Okay, so Danny, do me a favor and put that in a message to me in email, text, 
a Facebook message um, or like in a written, not in a, I, I won't remember that by the time I'm done and I won't find this post or your, your notification. So I'll definitely give you a number that you want that's open. So, okay. So that's celebration in full swing. The other thing too <clears throat> that I want to tell you guys about is this is still the hottest deal of the month and next month. These are the five packs of papers that you get for signing up to be a discount shopper or a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. They're ba basically the same. It's however you want to do it. Uh, there's, <clears throat> this is like the, the paper that's going to be available in the annual catalog starting in June. And they're all the color families with all the new designs. So, <laughs> You're so funny, Danny. Squirrel. I am the exact same way. So just a reminder that you can still sign up through February 28th to get all these awesome packs of papers. So the, the Be Happy stampers are growing. I love it. I love it. I love it when Stampin' Up! offers an incentive. Um, Any time is always a good time to sign up. But when there's a little incentive, an extra perk for signing up, it's always fun to take advantage of that. So hi, Linda. Hi, Jolene. Hi, Debbie Peters. Yay. So that celebration, <clears throat> just a reminder too, I can't believe it, but mystery night is coming up on Tuesday, okay? I almost forgot about it. It's like, you know, January seemed to go really slow until the last half now. I feel like it's just flying by. Tuesday night is mystery night. It's not the normal night of the week. It's normally on Monday, but I have my Love You Always card class on Monday night. And then I have bingo on Wednesday. So <laughs> next week, every night. <laughs> oh man, hi Vicky, hi Patricia. Oh, Monday's class, Tuesday's class, Wednesday's class, Thursday's class. And I don't, oh, Friday's probably a class. <laughs> we'll see. And then Saturday's class. So poor Tyler doesn't get much of me next week. <laughs> so, okay, let me flip down real quick. I was just telling you about the Love You class. It's called Love You Always. <clears throat> I got these cards done on Sunday night and I know it's, um, class is a little bit, it's coming up actually in person is Saturday and then Monday and then the live is February 4th. So I took who all signed up and I added 10 extra kits to my um, lot for my forecasting purposes. So if you aren't on the guest list and this is something that you want to do, please, please reach out to me soon uh, and get your name on the list. I, like I said, I made um, 10 extra kits for this class and I'd love to get one for you. They will go in the mail either next Friday or Saturday. So, because the class is until February 4th. Hi, Deb. Okay, so that's what's coming up for that. The other thing that's coming up that I'm working on next for you guys is the fun folds class. There'll be four fun folds. And aren't they gorgeous, Danny? I love those. Oh, they're so pretty. The pinks and the blacks with the white. So cool. So fun folds will be fun four fun folds. And I will tell you, for those of you that aren't, local i always use four different stamp sets too so i know if you like to have the matching stamp set that's where you're gonna have to get creative and potentially use something else that you have in your stamp and arsenal so i don't know what fun folds they will be yet but they will be fun <laughs> i'm sure they will be so um as soon as i get them made i will be doing a video like i did or have been doing for all my cards so you can kind of see them in a little short video so um the other thing I, tomorrow night is the swap card showcase. Wow, I forgot all about it. I have not been putting my swap cards up on my display boards that I have up here. I have them spread out all over the counter because we have a swap card showcase tomorrow night. So I'm gonna be live at 6 p.m. Central and we're just gonna walk through them, gonna talk about them. I've got them categorized by stamp set and we'll get through as much as I can in an hour and a half. It might be like a drive or a, like a fly by the seat of my pants type thing and just get through them because I think that there's probably 200 cards and I have a, my brother is going to be in town tomorrow night. So I have a, <clears throat> a cap on 730, I told him, because <laughs> we want to get together and hang out. So, so that is tomorrow night. Again, if you can't make it, you guys always can watch the replay. Hi, Diane. Hi, Julie from Ohio. <clears throat> so just a reminder to like and commenting, sharing the, four, the three cards I'll be making tonight. I will be announcing who wins them next Thursday, or maybe I'll do it Tuesday. I'll do it Tuesday because next Thursday we'll do the live winners of the mystery card night. So, um, so after we're done making cards tonight, I will be announcing the four winners from the celebration cards last week. And what else? Oh, back orders, guys. <clears throat> so 
I don't know if you have gone out and seen that some of the items are on back order. So there's certain things that are, are selling above the forecast of what Stampin' Up! originally had. So the gorgeous grape ribbon, the pastel pearls, the something else and something else. <laughs> I can't remember exactly what they are at the moment. Pastel pearls, grape ribbon, there's like three or four things that are not available at the moment. Some of them are on back order and you can order them and they'll ship to you as soon as they come back in stock. And some things are already turned off. Like the pastel pearls, you can't add them to your order right now. They're gone, but they're coming back in March. So when they get back into inventory, that's when they like turn the number back on. And so if you're ever unsure about something that you wanna get, you can always just reach out to me and say, hey, these aren't coming up. Is it possible they're on back order? And I can tell you. But if you're ordering on the Stampin' Up! website, it should tell you back order. So, <clears throat> and if it doesn't let you add the item number, that's because it's turned off. So yes, the ombre paper, you're right, Sandy. That one is turned off as well. January 25th, we had mentioned that just a little bit ago that you guys can get at the ombre paper later in this month. The 25th is next week. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be here before we know it. Okay, so that's a little bit on a back orders. So it's awesome. Those things are so pretty. <laughs> I mean, you guys have been seeing cards I've made with all that stuff and they just, they're a hot commodity right now. So everybody loves them. Um, and they kind of knew that going into the catalog that things were gonna run out. So they just didn't know when and they got POs placed for more product to come in. So, okay. Oh, one other thing, you guys. I made some, so the product shares. Um, I still have them, and if you missed, think you missed out, I'll flip this down. If you guys think you missed out on the product share with all of this stuff, <clears throat> I made four extra because I made a lot of extra, um, like option two ones with, that include the embellishments and the trinkets and the treat boxes, and I sold more of option one than option two, so I added a few more packs of paper to the lot. So if you guys are interested in, you get uh, the note cards and envelopes, the Valentine's Day one, and then 88 sheets of the specialty papers, the regular papers, and like the foils. So <clears throat> if you go to my calendar of events for January 5th, that's where I talk about the product share. Um, not, uh, I don't like to, <laughs> I'll tell you, it was confusing for people with the I have the DSP sampler pages, which are those white sheets that look like this. And then I have a product share and they're both on the calendar on the same day. So this is the product share I'm talking about. I have like four of those left, but I don't have any of the DSP samplers left. Those are gone, they're gone. Yay, I love it when I don't have anything left. <laughs> so wonderful. Oh, hi, Kathy Cornia, how are you doing tonight? Oh, Deb, you got your big order today. Yeah, I bet you can't wait to open that up. Whew. Oh, I love it. Oh, yes, yeah. So, Faye, you got the sprinkles and you won them in the raffle at the Winter Creative Escape. You lucky girl, you. <laughs> you won twice. You were the only person that won twice. So, you <laughs> you are lucky. I always tell people when they win things like that, they need to go get lottery tickets. <laughs> I, I should speak. I don't ever go get lottery tickets. <laughs> you have to play to win, right? Okay, so <clears throat> what we're going to do tonight is make some cards. And I think it's about time. Are you guys ready for it? <laughs> I think I am. So I was really excited because I love the kangaroo and I have added another class to the schedule. Yeah, you guys, you think I have a crazy schedule the way it is, but then this girl goes and adds more classes to her schedule. So we're going to be making the kangaroo card tonight. I love the kangaroo. Mm -hmm. Then there's also, hi, Mary Jo. <clears throat> there's the love card. You guys, so do you do this at home? Do you, I overmade all my insides of the Christmas cards I sent out and I can't waste it. So I, that, that will eventually get glued in here. <laughs> so, oh yeah. So you have to use every paper, right? So this one is the love is in the air card. And I think we're going to start with that one. <laughs> this nail set really grew on me, guys. I, when I first saw this, thanks for sharing, Randy. When I first saw this card, I, or the suite of products with the snail, it did not blow me away. But as I started to work with it and play with it, I fell in love with him, or it, <laughs> and the papers and the color combinations. They're just so bright and cheerful. 
So you guys always know I like to save my favorite card for last. <laughs> so you know we're doing kangaroo last. It doesn't mean that I do my least favorite one first. <laughs> I always just save my favorite one for last. Hi, Peggy Hit. Um, so we are going to start with this one because it only uses one color ink and then I can move aside all my stamps and ink for this one. So let's put these over here. Okay, so this is the love is in the air one. <clears throat> and yes, they're so cute, Amy. I definitely agree. I pulled in, so I have this from the DSP sampler. These are my oddball papers. And I pulled in the Love You Always. It's the Specialty Designer Series paper. And you get in this pack, they're, they're single-sided. They're not double. So in the pack, you get four 12 by 12s of them. And I have them here in this little, this little guy. And just to see them a little bit bigger pieces. And then... The three different colors are Blushing Bride, Rococo Rose, and Sahara Sand. And then the back side, they're white. There's nothing on there. So you don't feel bad gluing this paper down because it's covering up white. <laughs> so you're okay. Okay, so that's where that came in. Then there's also, let's see here. Let's grab the kit. Let's see what we got in here. Okay. Oh, yes, Karen. Everybody thought that about kangaroo. Like, either you loved the kangaroo right away or you weren't too thrilled with the kangaroo. <laughs> so I was one that loved the kangaroo right away. So the Lots of Heart is the stamp set that I used for this card. Um, and I pulled in this stamp. And so uh, I have mine done already. So when you guys get your kits from me, if you ever are, are new to me and you don't know what my kits entail... I do send out kits the week prior to class for anybody who wants to make cards with me. I just don't do any of your stamping. I do your die cutting. I do your embossing. Uh, I will give you all the embellishments and anything you need except for, and I'll give you white paper. I just don't stamp. It's against stamping up policy to stamp anything. So, so what you'll get <clears throat> is the Sahara sand piece like this, and it's your eight and a half by five and a half. Always grab your bone folder and burnish the edges. There's just something about the Sahara sand with the Rococo and the Blushing Bride. It's just very pretty and soft. <laughs> and so the Lots of Hearts, I pulled in this one. Um, this one would work too. And we had to use this at my in-person classes a couple times because I my stamp went down to Indiana after the event <laughs> and, and Jennifer had to mail it back to me. So this is a set of photopolymer stamps and I'm using the Two Hearts and the Sentiment out of here. And this is actually a bundle as well. And there's so many pretty dyes in this set. And I even don't have them all here because there some are over on the counter there. But like flip it over. I use magnetic sheets to hold my dyes down. But there's butterflies and X's and O's and flowers. This one right here is, I, I can't wait to use it. I got a, <laughs> oh, I have Valentine's Day bingo next week. I should make the card to use that. <laughs> I tell you, the only time I get to really try stuff is when I'm making a class card. <laughs> so, oh, you guys. Okay, so that's the bundle that was used for this card. And then on top of it, the embossing folder is in the back. Thanks, Deb, I appreciate that. Um, the embossing folder in the back is called Parisian, and all my embossing folders are sitting over on the counter. So when I get up to get something that else that I forgot, I'll go grab it so I can show it to you. But my kit has it done already, just like yours at home. I did emboss this already. It's very a very pretty, delicate uh, emboss image. And then in your kit, you'll also have a piece of Whisper White, uh, and mine is still Whisper White. I'm running through my stock. Five and a quarter by four. So these are both the same size. One's your inside mat, one's your outside mat. So for those of you at home, the ink color that I use, I did email everybody the PDF tutorial. So you have all the measurements, pictures, and instructions, and what is needed. Um, in case you don't have it though, just reach out to me. But the color I used is Rococo Rose. And how I did the inside here. So happy Valentine's Day. That actually came from, it was really hard to find a happy Valentine's Day. There's only two of them that I'm aware of. One is happy Valentine's Day. I mean, from Stampin' Up. One is happy Valentine's Day, and it comes from this set meant to be. So that's one if you wanted Valentine's Day. But you can get creative in this set called A Wish for Everything. That's where the dies come from. So let's see if I have them somewhere. Um, there's, there's a set of dies that are with this. 
that actually create the love. That So the love is the dies that go with a wish for everything. And I use here happy and then the Valentine's Day, Valentine's, and the day is in here. So this is a mishmash of a lot of little baby stamps and <laughs> you gotta kind of put it together. So, but it, it, there's almost everything in here that you need. Hi, Francie Freeberg, you made it, yay. So everything's in here for all the different occasions that you need. I think that my mom needs a St. Patty's Day card and there is St. Patrick's Day here. So I'm trying to formulate in my head what I'm gonna make for her card. And I think it's gonna be the chicken, <laughs> the chicken with a, a top hat that's green and that have the, the St. Patrick's Day. So you guys, in your love to just while you have pull that out, make sure to pop out any little particles that need to get popped out. So you should have a love in your kit. And then you'll also have this piece of Blushing Bride. And that is, what is it? It is three and three sixteenths by four and seven sixteenths. And that's the piece that goes back here. So the reason it's like that is because I wanted to cut this square at a three by three. I was able to get 16 squares out of a 12 by 12 when you cut your DSP to a three by three. And then I like to do a three sixteenths divided by two margin around my edge. So it's not like a full like eighth inch. I like to do a little bit less than an eighth inch just to give a little color, but not too little. Um, so, so you should have the three by three here. You'll also have this blushing bride heart and this heart is die cut from the lots of heart. You should have a piece of the Blushing Bride metallic ribbon. So this is, I think, one that is either on low inventory or on back order as well. And it's so pretty. It has the Blushing Bride on one side and it has the like crummy cakes, like tan color on the other side. So you can choose which color you want. If you want to be pink or if you want to be the tan. And I am gonna choose the tan because it'll pull out some more of the browns in here, so. Oh, the chicken stamps are awesome, you guys. Oh my gosh, I should show you the March cards. I, I'll run over and get them. So in your kit, you're gonna have a white piece like this. The heart is cut out for you, but I also included a white square. In case you don't have this die cut and you wanna stamp something else, you could. Um, what you could do if you didn't have the stamps to match this, you could, like I'm gonna do the back side of this, you could like sponge the edges like this with, you know, I would use a sponge probably, but just to give you a look of what it might look like, you could just put color along the edges with a sponge or with an ink pad to give it a little bit of color in case you don't have the stamp. And also I, I throw in that extra piece of white so that in case you stamp it bad, you have another piece <laughs> to actually stamp it good on, right? Always, always good to have two shots at everything. So the heart is here and photopolymer and ro cocoa rose on here. And then I have stamped on the inside scent. Oh, this is a good one. So this is actually uh, what a lot of people were doing in class. It's the scent with lots of heart. It's a really pretty um, sentiment. And then I was gonna show you guys how to do the three hearts on the bottom here. So if you have a little heart stamp at home, that would work just fine. But if you, if you have a bigger heart stamp, that's good too. <clears throat> but how you get this look like that is you, oh, we're gonna do on the back side. So you just get your stamp inked up and you'll go first strength, second strength, third strength. And that's how you get the, the three-tone heart look that I've got in the bottom corner here. Not rocket science, <laughs> it's actually pretty simple. So, and you can do that with any color. If you don't, hi Judy Wyant, hi Katie Schmidt. If you guys don't have a cocoa rose, um, black would actually work too, or actually I would use espresso. If you don't have a, a pretty pink that matches, espresso or like a crumb cake or a tan would work really nicely too. So I'm gonna pull out my chamois. Um, the Stampin' Chamois are available through Stampin' Up as well as are the cases. So that's where I get them from. All right, so now we've got all of our Stampin' done. It's a little bit time for assembly. So. Here's what I've got. There's a little method to the madness. <laughs> I had to catch a couple people in in-person class <laughs> about getting those ribbons down, guys. <laughs> Everybody gets so glue happy. Hi, Linda. So when you're looking at your paper, somebody asked me, which way does it go? I mean, does is there a top or a bottom to it? And it just, it doesn't. These flowers go every which way. So like that flower is going down here. That's going this way. So I guess 
I would just take a look at what makes the most sense. And honestly, it probably doesn't. Nobody's going to notice if your flowers are going up or down on this. Oh, you forgot to order your chamois, Danny. Oh, no. <laughs> You're going to have to add it. So, you guys, when I'm working on my wish lists for what I need to order from Stampin' Up!, I have an app in my phone and it's called Remember the Milk. And I have a folder in that app that, you know, it's Remember the Milk because you always go to the grocery store and you forget the milk. And so <laughs> that's why it's called Remember the Milk. But um, I, as soon as I think I need something, I put it in that list. So here's the trick with the ribbon. This happened to a couple people in class too. Some people put the ribbon over here. And when you put the ribbon over there, then when you center your heart on the ribbon, part of your heart is hanging off. So when you do adhere your ribbon, it is more or less flush with the right side of the designer paper. And when you do that, then your heart has a little bit of a uh, blushing bride margin over here. So I did prep it with the tear and tape. And then uh, from the front, I like to hold it straight and I just flip my tails over. And I, I see a lot of people try to hold it upside down and put it down. And that just, that doesn't make sense to me because you're not seeing how straight it is in the front when you do that. So by prepping the back with your double-sided tape, hi Mary, it allows you to hold it in the front and then just flip your tails over. Okay, so I'm gonna treat my second round of the tear and tape as regular tape because I wanna pop up this layer. And so I need to grab dimensionals. And so I wanted to show you guys this. I know sometimes you catch me when I do things and sometimes you don't. Oops, that one in there. So when I open up my new dimensional, I, I don't open it over there and deal with that flap. That flap irritates me. So what I do is I poke a hole in the back here and I just slice it open like that. And I make sure that the ends are nice and open and not catching. And then it allows me just to slide my sheet. So now this is how I store my dimensionals. And then if I take this out, I'll just slide that one right in the front and I never have to deal with catching those anymore. So that's a little trick with the dimensionals. Now, I think that there's also a trick with your dimensionals. Oops. Um, I think what I've seen, you guys are gonna hear my, my Mario go off. I think what I've seen like my upline do is draw lines on this so that, <laughs> I don't know if this is how she did it or not, but when you start out with dimensionals, you have a hard time seeing them on your table because they're white and they blend in. And so one of the things that they say to do is draw lines on it and it will help you find them on your table and that gets thrown away anyways. <laughs> so I think that makes sense. Just give them a second so that the permanent ink dries so you don't get it all over your fingers. Um, and then the reason that I didn't tear this off is because had I picked that off, my tape would stick down flat there and it would try to pop up everywhere else. So by leaving the tear and tape waxy paper on, then it, it won't get caught there and stick. So, okay, so that's prepped and ready. And what you're gonna do is glue this one. And so there's a top and a bottom to this. You can pick what you want your top and bottom to be. Just know that one side, the they're more pushed out and this one is more recessed. So I always like the more pushed out, popped out to be um, the one that you see and displayed. The other thing too with this embossing folder, um, now that I think about it, it's a very <laughs> bumbly one is my word for it. It's very rough. And <clears throat> I like to get the glue all over. You guys don't generally see me with messy glue like this back here, but on embossing folders that are, are bumbly like that, I do. <laughs> <clears throat> We're making up words as we go, but that one I made up a long time ago. Uh, so now this is ready to go and it's just centered on here. You've got about the same margin all the way around, depending on <laughs> what angle you're looking at. Okay, this little guy, I glued him flat right onto, I think I did, yep. And if you wanna pop it up, you can, it's your card. So I am centering this peak of the, the bottom and then the, the inner peak of <laughs> the top, um, centering that with my ribbon. And that goes like that. Stella, <clears throat> we need to get her out and off of her <laughs> break. <laughs> so, all right, so flip over your heart or put your, the front of your heart, no. Part of your heart, let's see what it looks like. The love gets 
doesn't cover up a lot. So you just want to go ahead and stell the whole thing. Stella, I think by now, if you've been watching me, she tries to make an appearance on every live from the hive. <laughs> and what she does is she glitterifies everything. Hi, Kathy back. So she is your glitter queen. And um, how you use her when she first comes, she has a little black ring around and you got to take that off by twisting. Um, you just take this apart, pull that off, and then that will pierce to that. And then there's these two sides that they push and push. <clears throat> and that will, when you push those, it puts more of her <laughs> her stellarific juice into the chamber and it'll it'll fill it up and you have more glitter. So definitely want to go ahead and do that to the love as well. All right, so we need to have glitter. We try for Stella on every card. I, you guys, I try for ribbon on every card and I always have embellishments on every card. That's just how I roll. <laughs> you gotta use that stuff. Okay, let's put our inside in. I think I'm done using <laughs> the back of it as a mat. <laughs> uh, let's get that in before I accidentally wreck it, right? Okay, so we're gonna put, oh, and I probably got Stella. Oh yeah, Stella made her way through the back. Oh well, nobody will ever notice. So, all right, so that's glued in the inside. Then we have the heart here is popped up. So grab a couple, I like the big ones. They seem to fill that up really nicely. And then we just have to put our love on it. Now, a couple things with the love. If you guys are making this card at home, by putting lines on each row of ones, you can then tell which dimensionals are still have the backing on and needs to be removed. Yep. You got it. <laughs> you got it. That's exactly it. So um, the love here. If you're at home and you have the Stampin' Up! sticker sheets, I would have definitely put the sticker sheet on before I die cut it because then you can peel off and then this becomes a sticker and then you just have to set it down like that. Well, I didn't do that <laughs> um, for class. <laughs> so what you guys have to do is you have to be very strategic about your glue and not squeezing too hard. You just put a little... Oh, he's starting to come out here. Little bits of dots all over in random spots. You don't have to do the whole thing there. Just a little bit. Just know the more glue that you put on this, the more that it's going to ooze out and go outside the lines. So the Stella saturated this little piece of paper, and so it's really floppy. Okay, so our love is going to go right there. All right, so it's bling time. So everybody got in their kit some diamonds, the, the rhinestones. Diamonds are forever, ever. And you should have gotten a big one and a medium one and a small one or a big one and a, two small ones. I don't know exactly how I cut them, but you'll have three. You should have three rhinestones. And just know that's very staticky in my hive here. And <laughs> I don't know if that static electricity carries through to the mail and then to your house, but... When you open up your kit, just be careful that those diamonds are stuck to something. They should be in there, though. <clears throat> so, boom. You guys, we got one card done. Isn't it pretty? Okay, so for those of you who participate in swaps or do swapping where you make multiples of a card and then you swap them and get other cards back, this layout is amazing for swap cards. You use a 3x3 three three paper, so you get 16 out of one sheet. And then an embossed mat on the back, this little mat here, a ribbon, and then find something to go right here. A circle, like a stitched circle with like anything on it in little words, like it would be amazing and add some embellishments. This is a nice, easy layout for a swap card. Um, what you put on it here is what makes the difference. But like this, this, these four layers are super easy. It's this, that you might, <laughs> depending on you, might make it more. <laughs> so, okay, we got one done. Let's put you over there and put you back in here. Uno, done. Okay, now we're gonna go to the snail. Okay, so let's show you guys what the snail is all about. So let's move the stuff over here. Okay. Snail, snail, snailed it. Okay, snailed it is the name of the stamp set. And it is a bundle. I think the bundle costs $44. Hi, Lisa. Uh, oh, that's the kangaroo. Ha ha. We'll save that one for the next one. But let's see here. Here's the snail. <clears throat> so Carolee Crab did an amazing display board 
with the snailed it. So, oh, you guys, if you attended the Winter Creative Escape, like you were rocked <laughs> with all these samples. It was amazing. So the snailed it has this dude in here and the happy mail enclosed, the mushrooms, and then that one. Hello is really pretty. You snailed it is awesome. Um, my upline Kelly Atchison sent me this card because I was number one in sales on her team for November. So she sent me this card and says, you snailed it. And again, it says he's a cutie. He's a cutie patootie. Okay, so the colors that go with the snail bit, if, oh, I'm trying to reach. This is my sheet here. So I'll be honest with you. This is what I had a hard time about with this paper is like there's lots of bubbly things. <laughs> if that's how I have to explain it, bubbly things. But there's also the patterns. I like more, I don't know, like, the same thing over and over like this heart was awesome like and I like this one and I like that blue one and I like the stripes I like more subdued like like this one's okay it's the <laughs> but like these things I'm like what do I do with them this one's okay <laughs> so it was really hard but I'll be honest with you these this card and my next card used my two favorites of DSP out of this 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 Bermuda Bay one and then the hearts are on the kangaroo card so this is part of the suite and so is the twine here uh, yeah, they are so cute, Angela. I know. So the twine is part of the snail suite. And then on top of it, these little hearts are the most fun thing, adorable thing to work with. They're resin hearts. They feel like they're little candies, but you shouldn't eat them. There's white, half white, half red. And I use the red ones on the kangaroo card and the white ones on the snail. So we'll use these shortly. So that's, I think, everything that's in the suite of products. And so the dyes, though, you guys... This is what's so cool about them. There's this is like a postage stamp. And that's what was used to die cut that out. And then there is this, oh, these little mushrooms. If you're not a mushroom fan, sorry, like you might not get into this, but I, I love mushrooms, you guys. If you hear my phone going off, I'm getting, hi, Barbara. Um, is Yeah, it's busy looking. That's exactly it, Anne. The paper's busy looking. And I don't like so busy looking paper. <laughs> so, But you guys, I have I have a thing with Super Mario Brothers. I think if you've been watching me, you see I kind of allude to that a lot. And so I love mushrooms. I never loved mushrooms when I was growing up, but I love mushrooms now. <laughs> so, okay. This die right here cuts out an envelope. Oh my gosh. Okay. So there's, I'm going to show you some cards here just because I can. Um, I have, I don't know if you can hear me, but okay. So I have some sample cards here to show you that envelope. That's not the right card. Let's put you back over here. Okay. So that envelope is right here. And Candy Michael made these in my swap. This little end. So this guy right here, when you die cut that, it creates this little envelope. And she made this out of vellum. And there's a little letter in it. And that little letter is, so that's this piece right here. And then the hearts, these two hearts are attached on the top of it. And so that little love note fits right in there. So is that not the most adorable thing? Okay, so you may not get into like the snails, but this is a perfect example of where you might want the dyes. <laughs> so, so this is so pretty. Okay. And then I don't know, should I keep high jewel? I should, I should keep showing you more. <laughs> I'll show you guys the rest of these cards tomorrow night during the swap card showcase. Okay. I promise. So just wanted to show you about these, these dyes. They are so cool. All right. So that's the bundle. And if I didn't just sell some snails, I don't know what's, <laughs> what's going on, but oh, oh, and then to top it off. Okay. So you guys, company's coming to top it off. All right. Normally I do not open up the paper pumpkin ahead, but I did this month. I ordered an extra one to get Valentine's day cards. Hi Dar. Congratulations on your graduation. Oh my gosh. That's so exciting. <laughs> I just saw your picture before I went live. You rocked it girl. Um, so paper pumpkin, I opened it up and I made the eight cards in there and they're already in the mail to people. <laughs> so, but you guys look at this, there is a snail. There's a little baby snail in the paper pumpkin for January. Oh my gosh. So we were adding the snail on the inside of our cards. He is so cute. So I did, I admit it. I'm all ready for paper pumpkin night. <laughs> okay, so for you guys making cards live with me, grab out your kits. You should have 
your piece of Bermuda Bay, eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Fold it, burnish it, and have that ready. You're very welcome, Dar. Oh my gosh, you work so hard at your schooling and it must be such a sense of accomplishment to be done. <laughs> so you rocked it, girl. Okay, your two mats here are the same size, four by five and a quarter. So the white one here, I've already stamped the hello. So the hello is in a memento. And then here's you snailed it. So if you have the set, you could do you snailed it. That is an awesome sentiment too. And then mushrooms in the bottom. And then lastly will be this guy. We'll talk about him in a second. But that's the inside. So let's go ahead once, oh my gosh, you guys. So this stamp set, be careful. I had so many halos with this guy and with the mushrooms. And this is me and like, that's why there's two sheets to every paper. After I figured out there was a halo because I didn't practice on my scratch paper, then I, <laughs> you just flip it over and you're good to go. So you got your white piece gets glued here. Now, if you wanna color your mushrooms, like if you end up stamping mushrooms, you can color them Bermuda and blush. Um, there's no blushing bride marker, but there's flirty flamingo. So those are the markers I'm gonna pull in for this one. Okay, so your um, blushing bride layer here is embossed with the tasteful textiles. It's in my top three embossing folders for favorites. I love subtleness. And so that gives it that little bit of subtleness and not too much crazy. So, oh man, so depending on how I cut your paper, you could choose to do the big snails, but I was going for the Bermuda Bay look with the swirlies, and that is a two inch piece by four, what is it? Four and, five and one sixteenth is what that is. So that can get adhered down. Hi, Ruth Miller. And that gets adhered. You got a little pink border. Your blushing bride is peeking around the three edges. Then you should have in your kit the Blushing Bride and the white twine. And so you can take your tear and tape and you're gonna adhere some of that to the back so we can tape that down. You're gonna make your little ribbon sandwich. Yeah, those snails. So I think that for this paper that I just glued down, the dies match with it. So one of the things I did do is I made sure that my Blushing Bride twine was on the left and the white was on the right so that it created a, like a pink white pink look to it if you put the pink on the right it'll kind of blend in and most people don't even see it so <laughs> you i mean if you're adding it to the card you want people to be able to see it a little bit so that is a way to help people see it a little bit more hi anna rabidoo nice to see you on here and take your tape off or your paper. So I have found that for if you're new to tear and tape, the more that you press down on the waxy paper, the easier it is to peel it up or yep, pull it up. Grab your glue and adhere. Now that one's a more subtle, smooth embossed image. So I didn't do the glue all the way around. Then that will get adhered onto your card front like that. You guys, I matched jewelry in my shirt for this card tonight. <laughs> Got the blue power going on here. Like the Bermuda Bay is my shirt here. <laughs> okay. Then this is how the postage stamp thing works. So everybody in your kit, you have this cut out for you. So you have to, depends if you don't have the snail set, you could do anything in the center here. It doesn't even have to be, it, it could be flowers. It could be a cat. It could be a dog. It could be anything. But how I did it with, if you have the snail set, G very gingerly, you're gonna stamp this guy right in the middle of the postage stamp. I say that because I was, the halo is just, it's around here, so, okay. So you have this white piece, I stamped that on here. Now, um, you have a piece of, in your kits, you have this guy cut out, so you have this shape of a snail cut out, and you also have a scratch piece, like maybe about yay big. So depending on what you have, you've got a couple options, but what you're gonna do is, um, what if you're got, if you have the stamp set at home, I would stamp this in your memento on your white piece of paper. You'll go die, cut it out, color it. 
So the colors I used were a light Bermuda Bay. So this is not crazy coloring. It's just light Bermuda Bay. And then it's the flirty flamingo. And I know that those two pinks do not look alike, but it is really flirty flamingo. And it really does tie in with the blushing bride very nicely. And then this guy right here is the light cherry cobbler you could use there or if you have dark melon mambo, but anything to color in the little heart here. Now in class, somebody had googly eyes with them and they put the googly eyes on and it was pretty cool. So, so once you have your snail stamped and cut out or stamped onto my cutout piece that I provided to you, this guy gets popped up and I've just put a couple dimensionals on the back for him. And then the reason it's stamped twice is because the die doesn't include the words so I wanted the words to stay there. And then that guy just went over the top. So it looked like that. And then that is all popped up on the card front. So put a few more dimensionals on the back of that. Hi, Mary Ann. And I have it not centered. I have it just slightly north of the equator. So if that's the middle, then I put it just slightly above it and then Boom, <laughs> the googly eyes. I know, they were so cute when they put them on. Um, and we had googly eyes last, I think, fall. This, not this last one, but the one before. And then you have your resin hearts. And I think that it works good to use the take your pick tool. Just take that and you pull. And I think I provided three in everybody's kits because everything's good in odd numbers, <laughs> like our floral arrangements. And then... Oh, he's a little crooked. I want that guy like that. There. So these are also good to press down. Once you have them where you want them, secure them with a good push, and they shouldn't come off. <laughs> they shouldn't flick off. So, all right, guys. We've got our second card done. Okay, so does not that make you happy? Like, wouldn't you be excited to get a card in the mail that looked like that? I, I, it's just so, the colors are so bright and cheerful. I think I would be happy to get a card like that. <laughs> okay, so there we go. That guy's done. So we'll set him off. Hi, Kim. We'll set him off to the side. And last, but certainly not least, is our kangaroo dude. Our roo. Okay, so, oh, this card makes me happy too. <laughs> just so fun. All right, this is... A, not a traditional card base. It is actually a six and a half this way by five and a half. And um, it's scored at four and a quarter. So it makes for a traditional eight. Oh man, you guys, we forgot to sell the last card. Um, hang on. We got to go back. We got to go back. So what we're going to do is Stella the heart. And we're going to Stella... Stella his body or its body, whatever it is. And then we're going to Stella that. Okay. And depending on where your eyes end up, you may take a black marker and just fill them in a little bit darker depending on how your ink is. But, oh man, he's Stella. I love it. Okay, cool. Back to business. So we have our six and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter. Okay. And then our DSP is five and a quarter by two. So that fits on this panel really nicely. Mushrooms, mushrooms on the back. Okay, let's get rid of them. They're really crazy busy for me. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. It's my grandma's, <laughs> my grandma Katie's, that's what I said to my mom was over. I said, mom, is it okay if I keep the magnifying glass for a little bit longer? She's like, yes, as long as you don't break grandma Katie's magnifying glass. So it was my mom's grandma's. And I said, nope, it stays right over here. It really never leaves this spot of the area here. And so she's fine with it. So the next mystery night, Kim, is on Tuesday. Isn't that crazy how, like, it's the 26th already. So it'll be here before we know it. Okay, so you guys already made my little bosey up. So we'll set that off to the side. That's using that snail twine. And everybody in there, so in your kits, you have your bow. And you also have a piece uh, like that for wrapping around. So um, your piece of red here is four and a quarter by three and a quarter. And you have two pieces of white. They're both three by four. And so this one is embossed with, uh, oh man, painted textures. It's part of the art floral suite of products. 
And so that just fits right on there like that. And so go ahead. You guys should all, you're very welcome, Kim. You should all be able just to take that and adhere that onto the piece of red. And it has your eighth inch border all the way around it because the white is just a quarter inch less on two of the sides. All right, so the trick with the twine, you don't want your twine tape to be showing right here. So it's important that you start and end where the twine, you, where you're not gonna see the tape. So we can go ahead and it's about an inch up from right there. So on the left-hand side where it's gonna be overlapping the heart paper, that's where you're gonna wanna put your twine. Oh, you're very welcome, Ruth. <laughs> oh, hi, Gwen. Okay, so then your tails are gonna start on the end here like that. And I don't generally wrap things around. I think if you guys have been watching me, you know I'm a ribbon conservationist. So, but in this case, you have to wrap your stuff around twice. You really do. You go one, two, buckle my shoe, and back to the door here. <laughs> okay, so then get some more tape, and you're going to put that over the top of that. And I'm actually going to leave my tear and tape waxy paper on because I don't, I'm going to be popping that up. Hi, Sharon. All right. So then we're going to take and trim the ends of that. And this is going to get popped up with dimensionals. So you have to be very careful because you do not want to put any dimensionals right there. So the trick that I do is I will put, so I see, okay, I have about that much room there. I'm going to go right here, right here, and then put two in the middle. But that's gonna make sure I don't go over on that side. Now on my left side here, I'm gonna put four of them as well. I mean, three is fine too, but I'm going for four. I'm going big or go home, right? So now when I put this down, I never risk going over the edge. I see a lot of people try to guess, well, how far should this be at, with dimensionals? You never have to guess when you put one row on the left side farthest to the edge and then one side on this base as far to the right side. Now, again, I left that waxy paper there, otherwise that would wanna stick to the card there and I don't because of the dimensionals. And then this will just get centered on your card top to bottom. Uh, maybe I'm gonna go a little bit more to the right because I like to see the heart paper actually on the left here. Okay, see that? That's how you do that. Okay. The inside is a three by four and it's hopping by just to say hi. So, ooh, you guys, we forgot the kangaroo. Oh man, he didn't get any love. I, I've been loving on him for a month now or even longer, but this is the kangaroo and company. Oh my goodness. Top three stamp set bundle in this catalog is in this, that's in the top three. Hmm? It might even be one, but I'm going to be doing a class, um, on just the kangaroo in in June, I think. I, put, I just added it to the calendar. And um, I love that you have the presents, you have hearts, you have flowers, you have your little Joey here, you have the little hat, you have an envelope. And what's so cool about these dies, you guys, if you just get the stamp set, you're very much missing out. So Barbara, I'm so happy that I saw that you ordered the dies on your last order. This kangaroo die, he it cuts out a slit here for the pouch. And so when that happens, that is the, that's the magic right there. That's the, how you can put those flowers in his pocket or her pocket. You can put the presents. You can put that little card. You can put the baby. And that's so cool. And this little guy right here, this white piece, I hand cut this because I didn't even know there was a die. But there's a die. It's over on my counter because we were using it for class. But there's a die that cuts that out. There's a die for the little Joey. The, there's a, just there's dies for everything. So it's so cool and this whole bundle is like $36 <laughs> it's so inexpensive for this set right here <laughs> so yes yeah, so you too Barbara <laughs> oh so I love this kangaroo so oh, I just can't wait to make more cards with it <laughs> it makes me happy so I have on here just popping by to say hi and that's in I did that with the early espresso ink here so that and if you want to make a Valentine's Day card you could pull in the real red that's the matching color for this um, your little Joey, he would be down here in the bottom in brown. And if you want to color him, you definitely can. Um, I guess this came out in class. 
that I probably should have colored Mama Kangaroo's pouch brown. I don't think that the pouch is supposed to be white. Um, so I, I definitely was going to go to Google Images and look up a kangaroo because I didn't do that. <laughs> so, oh, yes, a baby shower with this set. Like this set is the most versatile set in the mini catalog with all the different occasions you could accomplish with this set. Oh my gosh, definitely. Like very, very versatile. And all the different color patterns that you could do. So with this white, I'm just gonna center that right in the middle here as best I can. The liquid glue allows me to wiggle it around till I get it to where I want it visually. And then when you shut that, you won't see that white piece of paper there. So back to our kangaroo now. So in your kits, you have these three die cut pieces. You have the roux, you have this thing, and you have the hearts. Now, I also provided a piece of white for you that is about three by four and a quarter. In case you can't stamp on these or you don't wanna draw your stamped images, like you have a piece of white paper and you could use that white paper to do something else on the front of your card and not even do a kangaroo. I can't wait to see what you guys do. If you don't have the kangaroo, this is my class card challenge that I love seeing what you guys do with the cards when you don't have the stamps at home. Okay, so how I did this in class, I set this up on the Stamparatus and I actually have class yet on Saturday so I haven't taken a part. <laughs> Sometimes that you guys, when I do my live class, I, I take things apart and then I'm like, oh shoot, I shouldn't have done that. But I still have class on Saturday. And so this is how I set it up for people in class. Um, yes, it would make so many cute cards, Lynn. I definitely agree with you. I have a template here. And so what people did in class is I had everybody's white pieces die cut for them already. So pretend this isn't stamped or colored. And so this goes in here, right in the template. And then I have it set up that there's two sides. This is the Joey, the kangaroo side. And what people did in, are doing in class is they take that and then they'll open this up, they'll ink this. Whoa, <laughs> I almost lost that. And then you stamp it just like that. And it allows you to just die cut a whole mass of white pieces of paper or kangaroos and such without having to line up the magnet with tape and all that good stuff. So that was the one thing. So it was the kangaroo. Then on the back side, so this got cleaned and it got flipped over. And you always wanna make sure you start with your paper and home base because that photopolymer stamp, it likes to stick. And then like your paper gets pulled up. So then this little guy, I messed up. I, in my kit, originally had one that I hand cut myself. And so I'm gonna show you how this works. So the hearts are already done. So they're done, I'm gonna take that out. And what you can do then, I don't, you guys at home, you'll, you, you, these are photopolymer stamps. So if you don't have the dies for this, you have to get them. But if you don't have the dies, you could still stamp and see there so, through it. So I'm going to be inking up the love you much. Oh my gosh, the words are so awesome. I don't even think I went over the words with you guys. So you ink that up and then you just, whoa, the marker stuck to it. Okay, so then that goes like right there. You squish it good and it sticks because of the photopolymer. And now you've got the stamped image right exactly where it should be stamped. But again, this pops up. So it's like you always gotta get this back into home base. And then that's where the chamois come in so amazingly good for. The, when you're cleaning off your stamp radish, I highly do not recommend what wipes. <laughs> um, over a champaratus, uh, the champaratus, over the chamois, wipes leave white filaments. The drier your wipes get, the more little white particles you get all over your photopolymer stamps. And those little white particles get into your ink pads and then you get little fibers in your ink pads. And then you're like, why is that on my stamp? Why does that look like that? And it's, that's because. So chamois are amazing for cleaning your stamps without putting little white fibers all over everything. So, okay, kangaroo. <laughs> I colored his nose, oh, it's a her, she's a her. <laughs> I can say that honestly, she's a girl. Um, I colored her nose in the bronze. So the bronze ivory, there's my, <laughs> there's my Mario, I got a coin there guys. So bronze for the nose. And then flirty flamingo is what I used for her ears and the hearts here. So once I had the stamped, I used the light pink to color in. 
And then for the kangaroo fur was crumb cake. And it could be a combination of the dark and the light crumb cake um, colored in. So like, let's go ahead. I'm gonna put a piece of, piece of scratch paper here. And we're gonna just color in. So we're coloring in our body. <laughs> just to make it look, I think, right? <laughs> so with the blends, you know, you can use blends to blend and give depth and tone. But in this case, I just wanted to color her. I didn't care so much about the light and the dark. I more or less am caring about lines and streaks. And so like right here, what happened is I already had that colored and then I went over it. So I'm just gonna go lightly over that area and try to swirl that. I don't have, I don't believe I have my light. Oh, we're just gonna go for it. So if I had my light blend down here, then I could fill in with a little bit of the light, but we're making her her coat just a little bit darker this is what we're doing. So that's what another good thing about blends is if you want it a little darker, you just go over it, give it a little bit to dry and you can go right back over it and color it and make it just a little bit darker. So. I'm good with that. So there she's got her belly colored in. I think she's happy now. <laughs> okay, so here's the trick with the pouch. So it cuts this little slit automatically, right? So that looks like that. So now what we have to do is get our flowers onto our little tag here. So you don't wanna stamp your sentiment too high because you need a little spot to connect the hearts to it. And you don't wanna go too low either but like the three little bears, it's just gotta be right perfect for them, right? <laughs> so I'm gonna use a glue dot. You could definitely use liquid glue, but I'm gonna put this glue dot right at the top and I'm gonna kind of bunch it together so it doesn't make a, like the whole big circle. And then the heart just gets stuck right on there like that. So then when you put this in here, oh, I love it. Okay, so here's the thing. I found with the die cut that piece, it some it, depending on how you put it in here, like mine nestles in like that, it's hanging down here. It's, it's just a little bit past it. So I still end up taking my scissors and trimming that off. And I don't want it to be, I want it to be just right. So I'm gonna trim off just a little bit. I'm gonna try to curve it slightly. Hi, Lisa, there. So that should be good. So, oh, and if you need to cut more, you can always cut more. Just make sure you don't cut your words off of the bottom, just like that, okay? So now that's how that works. Don't forget to Stella, these hearts or her or something. We'll Stella her ears and her nose, <laughs> how's that sound? Okay, that is the kangaroo part. Now though, we have to make sure that we don't accidentally adhere this down so that we can't pull it out. So when it comes to the dimensionals, I put them, so I left, I flipped it upside down so I could see where I was putting dimensionals. I definitely have one on her head, her neck, and then where's my glue scissors? I'm gonna cut a little bit for her tail here so that it has a little pop action going. And I think that might be good, but maybe for good measure, we'll put one on her foot. <laughs> there, okay. So you can see here, I completely avoided this entire area because I didn't want to risk gluing that down. And, oh, you guys, it's the kangaroo. I waited so long to put this card together with you guys. Okay, so I have the roux, kind of like the bow is coming out over here. And honestly, you guys, I, I, when you just send me pictures of your cards, I get to see how you guys change it up. Because you know, they're always your cards at the end of the day. They're your cards and however you make them is however you should because they're yours. Then grab your little mini glue dot and I'm gonna put that right about, here. so when you put your bow, if you're not sure where to put your dough, bow, just kind of figure out where it might go and we're gonna put it over to the, like, the middle area and then just squish it down really good and it should stick. And then trim your tails with your ribbon scissors, which is that one. Oh, I just love this guy. It girl, whatever. <laughs> 
you guys, everything I have here, like I say, it's guys. So to have a girl on a card is really weird for me. So there's showcasing the three scissors. Did you guys see Kelly's Tip Tuesday with all the scissors? This is why you need three scissors. Oh, she had a good technique Thursday today as well. She is rocking it. So starting in February, hi, Melanie. Starting in February, you're going to start to see technique Thursdays and tip Tuesdays that are done jointly by us. So my life has settled down a little bit. Hi, Ellen. I'm not crazy in this project. The winter creative escape is past us. And Kelly's like, Chris, I need your help. I can't keep up with this. <laughs> so we said it's time. Yep. So we're going we're gonna to start doing them together. We're going to schedule time together twice a month to make the videos and then we will have them scheduled so that they go live on Tuesdays. So what do you think of that, guys? Okay, we've got our root card done. Okay, so I'm really curious. Do you like the white belly better or do you like the brown belly better? Because now that I look at them side by side, I almost think I like the white belly. I don't know if that's accurate for a kangaroo, but I feel like the white pops more on her. So, hmm. We'll see. I have to go Google, <laughs> go Google kangaroos. So, all right. So let's bring in all the cards so you guys can see and tell me which one is your favorite. I always love to know. <laughs> and sometimes you guys say all of them, but I don't know. I always have to love this kangaroo. Oh, yes. I just, I just, I want I think for the in-color retirement party that I have, you like the white too, Danny. So I did too. White pops. The white. You guys, I'm not alone. I think I'm going to leave the rest. Oh, Kelly's watching. She's looking forward to it. You're so funny, Kelly. Everybody loves your ideas, Kelly. <laughs> so you guys like the white belly. I love it. So um, yeah. So next week on, I think we talked about Tuesday night, I will announce who the winners of these three cards are at the end of mystery night. And then on Thursday night is when we'll be doing the live drawings for, oh, you're right, Anna. It could definitely be a lighter crumb cake. It should be to have a two-tone. Yeah. You guys are liking the kangaroo. Um, so what I have on a side note is I have a color lifter and the color lifter lightens up the area. And so I'm going to go get my color lifter and see if I can lighten up her belly a little bit. And then that will um, create a little bit of difference between the two. Okay, so these will be given away on Tuesday night. And then on, on Tuesday night, we'll be doing mystery night. And then you guys won't have much time. It'll be like last time. Oh, did we do that last time? With, it was a Tuesday to a Thursday. I think we did. So mystery light will be on Tuesday night and you guys will have till when? Kelly, we might have to talk about that. That's like one day to publish cards. We might We might give you guys... I don't know. We'll talk. Is a week and a half too long though? So if you guys have till, what is it? January, it would be like February 2nd. If we gave you, no, not 2nd, 3rd, 4th, February 4th. If we give you a week and two days though, is that too much time? Hmm. Tell me, you guys, I'm looking for um, answering, <laughs> inquiring minds want to know. Should we give you until February 4th, which is the Thursday of the love class, to have you guys submit your entries for the mystery card night. And that would give you guys a week and two days. And then I'll save these cards then to announce the winners for them next Thursday. So no, quicker the better. Oh my gosh, you're right. Okay, otherwise it drags out, right? Okay, um, that's what Kelly told me when we talked about it the last time too, is that it was good to, it's fresh in people's minds. So maybe we'll stick with having the due date by Wednesday night. So um, oh, Kathy King says um, February 4th. So we'll kind of watch the comments here as you guys have time to think about it. Uh, when and where do we get the clues? Oh, that's a good question, Jewel. So there's two places that you can get the jewels if you don't get emails from me. The jewels. Did I just say that? <laughs> if you can get the clues. <laughs> oh, I want jewels though too. And that is your name. It's a very pretty name. Um, uh, you can post by the next day. Perfect. Okay. We might be going that route. So, uh, so go to, here's you go. Here you go. Cardsbycrispy.com. And here's what you do. You, I'll show you real quick. This is one way where you can go. And if you go to my website, cardsbycrispy.com and you go to my calendar 
So if you're on a phone, these three little lines, there's an events t t uh, link right there. The It's the 26th, and then you click on Mystery Card Night. And in here, it has all the clues down here. So I don't know if you guys can see in the phone, but there it is. White, vanilla, coordinating cardstock, coordinating pattern paper. All of my classes are always in my website here under the events, not the join my team, <laughs> but you could join my team, uh, the events section right here. So all of, wherever you see a gray circle here or a gray square, those are classes. And then February is already set, like March is in here. So you can already, the clues aren't put in till like the week, the month before. So if you go to February's mystery night, you won't find the clues until we put them there. Okay, so that's one way. The other way you guys can look in case you're wondering is in my Cards by Christine page. So if you go to Cards by Christine and you go to events, so scroll down to events and here's another way to find my events. So there's the January monthly card making class, which we just did. There's the love you always, here's February. Oh my God, there's the chicken guys. <laughs> so you can see this, if you click on the picture, um, it brings it up bigger so that you guys can see. Um, I think if you tilt your phone a certain way, it will go. Just know that the pictures never do the cards justice. Oh, here's the Stamparatus 101 class where we're using all the kangaroos again. And you guys, what were you asking? Oh, 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 so mystery night. So, oh, so those are all ones that have multiple days. And then you keep going down and here it is. Mystery card making event. Scroll down. And if you click on the details, that's where it has all of the clues here. Clue one is the white vanilla cardstock, stamps, coordinating paper. So there's two ways that you can get to the details for what clues are and always to see the different upcoming events. Um, you guys, I have even the, um, the, what, the March cards done already. So, okay. So does that answer? I hope that answers your question. <laughs> but the, the wild haired chicken. Yes. So I am doing a coffee chicken and card class in June. And so these two new chicken sets that are available. So if you guys don't know, the chicken set that's in the mini catalog is coming out with matching dyes starting February 1st for customers. If you're a demonstrator, you can already order them. But there was a celebration set three years ago, I think three, that was called Hey Chick. And they are bringing it back and ma having matching dyes with it. So there's going to be two chicken bundles starting February 1st. So hi, Carissa. Okay. Uh, so we have four cards to give away, but did I miss anything? <laughs> I feel like it's only like an hour and 15 minutes into this class. I feel like whew, it, went, it went really fast. And I'll tell you for in-person classes that I had here too, Monday night they were done by eight and Wednesday night, they were done by 8 as well. I did the club class. They were done by 7.30. So this is the fourth time I'm doing these cards. <laughs> so um, so it feels so... If I forgot anything, you guys better tell me. <laughs> so, all right. Just a reminder too, if you want to sign up for the love class, please reach out to me. I have 10 spots left. I've got four of the product shares left. If you're looking for any of the papers or the embellishments, um, check my website for other classes that are coming up. Uh, for those people that are doing the online versions, I take registrations for class in the current month and then the next month. And I don't take them like four months out or three months out. <laughs> so it's only the current month. And I, so I'm taking reservations for online classes for February now. So um, so that is in case you were wondering. Oh, Danny, she finished all three cards with me. You're awesome. Hi, Bobby. Yeah, it was so quick. Okay. So another note here, um, my host code is, um, oh, that's another thing. You guys sometimes wonder about my host code. So I generally have it here, but I close workshops when they reach a certain amount. And so I always, if you go to like my story, then underneath the picture of me here with the maroony shirt on or that rose one, that's the code right there. So that nine number is what this is current. So at the time, this is always current, but this is always current. So like if you guys are watching past videos, you might see an old code, but know that you can always find the current code for my workshops on the my website. And that's one of the ways that you get your card kits for free is if you place a minimum order with me, it's either like the tonight was a $35 order, then I ship them to you for free. You're basically getting what you order from Stampin' Up and then the kits come from me. And for my four card classes, it's a $40 order. So 
So that's where you find the code. And when you use the code is when I can give you the class because then I, it helps me <laughs> with the products that I send out to you. So wonderful. Okay, so drum roll. You guys, if you watched the live on Monday night, you saw how we do the drum rolls. <laughs> we go. Okay, so winner, winner, chicken dinner of my ice cream cone card with sprinkles on top is Bonnie Kelly. You are the lucky winner of the ice cream cone. And we were naming this ice cream Incredible Hulk mixed with blue raspberry. <laughs> um, it's probably pistachio and blue raspberry. Okay, Ooh, we're gonna save that one for towards the end. Okay, <laughs> so here's a thank you card that we made last week using the blush, draw a brush bloom, blush, brush bloom, something like that. And then the DSP Brrr, winner, winner, winner is Anne Bellinger. You are the lucky winner. I know you're watching. So I will pop this card in the mail to you. I'll try to get it out tomorrow. I will get it in an envelope tonight. So yay. Congratulations, Anne. Okay. Which one do I do next? Okay. We're going to go for this one. <laughs> the hummingbird set using the, a touch of ink, which is free with a hundred dollar purchase. Thank you so much. And I've got the flower in the inside. The brrr, drum roll is Carol Jefferson. You are the lucky winner of the hummingbird card. And last but certainly not least, I saved it for last because you guys, I matched the envelope. <laughs> so uh, we were talking about this last week. You guys, I found the card I wanted to show you. So this is the card, the envelope. I don't know if, I, oh, here's the card. <laughs> Mary Ann sent this to me. So this is what it's all about with the matching. We talked about this last week, having this paper on the, on the envelope flap right here. This came from Marianne, I believe. Yep, Marianne made this. And oh, it's so pretty when they match like that. I love it, I love it, I love it. So I have to do that more often. <laughs> so, but on this one, what we did is we stamped the blueberries. Oh, and it's Diane Rangji. You are the winner. That was back there and somehow it made it on the envelope. Diane, you are the winner of the berry card right here. So... I have everybody's, well, I don't have everybody's. I have I have Anne's and Diane's addresses, but Carol and Bonnie, I need your addresses. So I will be doing my winner's, um, my winner's video or the graphic. I'll have it set for 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. So if you're not watching this video, you can definitely see that and give me your addresses. Wonderful. I think we did really good. <laughs> what am I going to do with the rest of the night? <laughs> Probably stamp. <laughs> So, oh, it's been on my um, to-do list to work on the game night that we're having in April to get the details of that. Because you know what? It's already like two, two months away, February, April, February, March, April. It's crazy. So that's what I had thought about working on was getting that ready because a couple of you have been asking about that. And otherwise, I might make some fun pull cards tonight. So are you guys going to stamp some more tonight? <laughs> or <are> they? <laughs> so, all right, you guys. Well, we'll see you live on Tuesday night so that we can do mystery car night. If you have any questions between now and then, absolutely let me know and I will help you out. And until Tuesday, lots of sunshine, love and hugs to you guys. I love you. Bye.